What's the word, y'all? The last day uh, for me as an NBA fan has been uh, very interesting. We found out that Kimball Walker is no longer in the rotation for the Knicks, and we found out that Blake Griffin is no longer in the rotation for the Nets. And immediately when I saw that notification, I felt a bit surprised, but then I had to take a step back. These are players, um, and I, I was thinking about that. When I saw the notifications, I, I was thinking about the name of Kimball Walker, the name of Blake Griffin, but these are players that are um, later in their career that signed to their organizations for a small amount of money that didn't have a lot of expectations for them personally, uh, but have been performing well under that expectation. And because of that, they're out of the rotation. And it's uh, it's a bit weird, man, because just a couple years, not even two full calendar years ago, Kimball Walker was an all-star starter. I was there in Chicago, man. He had this puffy fur coat, green, in the press box. He was an all-star starter. And since that moment, it's been completely downhill and he's completely out of the rotation. Blake Griffin played one of his best uh, seasons of his entire career just like, what, in 2019? When the last year in Detroit or the second to last year in Detroit? And now he's completely out of the rotation. And and when I see stuff like this, it makes me feel old. Now, I'm only 25 years old. I understand that that is, uh, that is not old at all. But I don't want to say I grew up with Blake Griffin. I blew up with Kimber Walker. But them and their primes, them as they're starting to make a name for themselves over the past decade is what turned me from just a kid or teenager that loved the game of basketball to someone that wanted to talk about it full-time as a living. So to see them in the twilight of their careers and completely out of the rotation and, and maybe out of the league soon makes me feel old. And I hate it. It's so crazy to think about how much basketball these players have played in the last... So, 20... 20 all-star game was in Chicago and then of course the season got shut down then we had the bubble then we had the shortened season and we're right back into basketball these dudes have been playing so much basketball in just two calendar years and I guess we've kind of seen that with the amount of injuries we've had in the last couple of years but it, it's if there's anything to take away from this video it's always something I always say enjoy basketball y'all because once the players start to hit their 30s you never really know what's gonna happen Kemba Walker uh, was an all-star starter just a little bit ago then he had some surgeries he's had some problems his entire career but once you hit it's something about once you see that 3-0 things can dramatically change so the 30 plus year old players as you see right now still doing their thing in the NBA enjoy that because you never really know what can happen or when it can happen but I do want to talk about these players uh, losing their spot in the rotation why we got to this point and what does it mean for the teams we start off with Kimball Walker um, it's a, I think the Kimball Walker story is even even a little bit sadder because he had been um, advertised as the hometown kid coming home and I think majority of NBA fans saw what he did last year and kind of subverted the expectations for Kimba we didn't expect him to go there and be an all-star but for the Knicks they need a shot creation need a shot making once they got to the playoffs adding a guy like Kimball Walker was a low risk high reward thing and they gave him about 20 games and boom um, he's, he's no longer in a rotation but even just like two weeks ago when we were doing our review of the NBA City jerseys their their photo shoot was Kemba Walker and it was a revolving around the hometown kid and unfortunately for for them or for Kemba he just hasn't been able to perform at all when I watch Knicks games there are sometimes two to three minute periods where he looks great but then all the other minutes he doesn't we're talking about a player that's had so many surgeries or so many injuries with his with his lower body a guy that relied on his quickness that quick first step that crossover and those things aren't getting his defenders anymore the only like thing that he has really been bringing to the team is his ability to, to shoot the three ball but that's pretty much it you take a look at the the worst lineups in the entire league this season it's the new york knicks starting lineup and we we question how long will it take for tom thibodeau to make some changes i personally didn't think it was going to be kemba walker losing the spot to alec burks but that is the decision he decided to make now there are rumors about them trying to get him to a different team because i believe everybody in the league likes kemba walker i interviewed kemba he was the greatest dude i didn't even know if that video's on youtube let me check it is the kemba walker video came, went up four months ago that's kind of crazy it's been that long um what you don't see in that video and our I recommend y'all go watch the video. We were reacting to highlights from me and Kimber Walker, but we're virtual. Um, he was in his big old mansion because Kimber Walker, he made a lot of money in his career. And he was like taking us around his house, trying to figure out the perfect spot for us to get his Wi-Fi connection. He dropped out of the call like six times. And I remember my producer was texting him like, don't worry, we can reschedule. But he was like, no, I want to do the show with y'all. So we went around his entire house until we found the perfect room with good Wi-Fi connection. He's just such a good guy. And them trying to give him to another team gives him another chance. I respect, but I, I, I feel like it'll be hard for a team to really buy in on Kim Walker. Now, the good thing about that is that he's only making X amount of dollars. It's not a lot so if a team did want to take another flyer on Kevin Walker you probably could but the what the what is the role for him he's probably not a star in the NBA anymore is he just a dude that you pay eight million dollars a year for and he gives you 15 of decent minutes off the bench I don't really know um and the way Tom Thibodeau talked about it let me read the quote it says that Tom Thibodeau 
says he has great respect for Walker and all he's accomplished. That tells me that I don't know if there's going to be another opportunity for him to potentially get back into the rotation. I don't think that's the same case for Blake Griffin. Um, so let's talk about Blake. Uh, Blake dropped out of the rotation. I remember before the season started, um, what is his name? Uh, Zach Lowe's. I love Zach Lowe's podcast. And one of the major criticisms he had about the Brooklyn Nets is that they had um, LaMarcus Soldiers, they had James Johnson, they had Paul Millsap, and they had Blake Griffin. These are all four players that at one point in their careers were like, uh, power forwards but now at the game as the game has evolved they're not fast enough to run the four anymore and the game is getting smaller so we're talking about four players that are probably going to play most of their minutes at center position and they all are kind of redundant in, the, in what they can and can't do so when you have four players that play very similar you're gonna drop the guy that plays the worst and so far this season it has been Blake Griffin he is at last time I checked he was shooting like let me go I think it was like 16 percent from three 16 percent from three is what it's at right now he's averaging five points per game five rebounds to assist again too too slow to keep up with the power forwards in the league but kind of too small to really raise the defensive ceiling of a team at the center position and I, I love the way Blake Griffin had revitalized his career right he had came into the league as a dude that was known as a dunker 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 and I actually interviewed I interviewed Blake Griffin John Wall and Kimball Walker isn't that kind of crazy all these older dudes that are like going through their own stuff right now um, and we talked about this in this interview where it's like he wanted to reinvent himself because a casual NBA fan saw Blake Griffin as a dude that can dunk, 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 but he knew he could be so much more than that. So he started to work on his three-point shot very early in his career, but he never broke it out in games because he spent seasons and seasons trying to get good at it. And then he did. Like, there, what, what season was that? His last season in L.A., when they basically told, they remember they, the Clippers are kind of shady for this one. Um, they signed Blake Griffin. They were basically saying like, listen, we want you to stay in here. We're going to have your number in the Raptors. And they traded my boy like 30 games to the season quickly like that. It's a business. I understand that, but still. But that last year, he had got to the point where he was attempting five three-pointers a game. He's shooting 45% from, from three, which is a little less than league average. But compared to the rest of his career before that, he had never shot threes before. And this season, he came into the scene. He was hitting his threes. And he ended up in Detroit. And that first full season of Detroit, all-star, all-NBA, he was a dude that that was the team. He was the team. And I remember he, he led them into the playoffs, and he was injured in the playoffs, and he tried to play through it. It was just like a lot of heart for, for Blake Griffin in those moments. And y'all know Chris Paul is my favorite player of all time, so I watched a lot of Chris Paul. I mean, a lot of Blake Griffin as he was the dunker, but like his rookie season, 22 points per game, and it was just... <sighs> I'm, now I'm reminiscing again. This what makes me. This what makes me feel old. Um, but he redid his entire career. Like I mean, he said in this interview that he was always a solid playmaker. But he played with Chris Paul. You didn't. Re he didn't really need to playmake like that because he had the, one of the greatest playmakers of all time on his team. So he got to Detroit. They gave him the ball, let him be like this, this point forward, and it was amazing for him. And then the injury started to kick in, and since then it has never been the same. But the thing about Blake Griffin is that he plays so hard. That's why I think that he still has the opportunity. I don't think this is the last we're going to see of Blake Griffin with the Nets. Like, it's, I don't think he's going to be out of the rotation for the rest of the season. I think that they're going to give him some more spot minutes eventually, and hopefully his shot comes around because he plays so hard. He leads the league and, and charges drawn per game. He puts his body on the line every single night. Maybe that's one of the reasons why he, he struggles to stay healthy. But he, he draws charges. He's a good locker room dude. But with those four guys, LaMarcus is playing out of this world. And that's another thing that contributed to Blake Griffin falling out of the rotation because LaMarcus is playing so well. James Johnson has been really good for them. And though Paul Millsap has been up and down, he's been better than Blake Griffin. So it feels weird, man. Those two dudes, bro, out of the rotation. And now we got um, John Wall trying to be freed. And yeah, free John Wall. He should be able to play. All right, man, that's all I really have to say. Let me know what you think about these two uh, two players. If you're a Nets fan or you're a Knicks fan, how do you feel since you're closer to the, um, to the whole thing than I am? I'm closing out every video by saying this from now on out. Enjoy basketball, y'all.